Hi guys, welcome to this week's Lush Kitchen video. I have one week left of school and then that is it. School's out, summer holidays and lots and lots and lots of Lush related videos. So if you guys have any ideas of what you'd like me to video and do, I know at the top of your list is probably a collection video that is already in the works, but any other videos you think would be really beneficial, please leave a comment below or contact me on Instagram and I shall add it to my list. This week is going to be not too expensive, but it's going to cost me a little bit of money and I am just dreading first of all the seasonal products because what I've heard is coming out seasonal non-seasonal oh my goodness I need to start saving which I'm not and secondly the perfume week which I don't know when the perfume week is coming out all I know is that this week the Lush Kitchen menu is looking good. So without further ado, this is this week's Lush Kitchen menu. So the first product coming up on Monday is something called Creme Anglaise Body Lotion. Creme Anglaise body lotion is a bit of a weird one to keep bringing out. It doesn't come out too often, but it has come out a number of times this year and last year, and it is easily Lush's most expensive body lotion. I have a pot here, and if you want to get one on Monday, this will set you back £29.50. Scent-wise, I don't think it's worth £29.50, unless you love that sort of scent. It's not something that blows my socks off. At the same time, it does have so many ingredients in it to make this body lotion sit above a lot of the other ones that Lush do. So this shares its scent with all the creme anglaise range. So if you loved Pot of Gold that came out in the kitchen a couple of weeks ago, it shares its scent with that. It shares its scent with um, Three Gold Rings, which is a bubble bar. I have one really old one left over and I'm sure some will come out during Christmas, so look out for those. So to me, this is a very foodie body lotion. It really reminds me of a pudding you'd have, a rich decadent pudding that you'd have in the winter time. It's not necessarily the body lotion that I would match up with summer smells and summer products. Now, I can't show you this because it'll just go all over the floor and for £29.50, I'm not willing to risk spilling it all over the place. But this is a very, very runny lotion. In a good way, you don't need a lot of this to moisturise across your skin. I'm just going to show you very quickly with what I've got on my finger here. It's a very light body lotion. So it goes into the skin really nice and quickly. It doesn't leave any greasy spots. You don't have to sit around for an hour for it to absorb into your skin. So in that way, it's really good. And especially with the smell, because the smell is quite thick and quite wholesome, you would expect it to be a really thick, sticky body lotion, and it's not. It's described as a vanilla scent, and I think that's a little bit misleading because you also have sweet orange oil and you have myrrh. And it's that myrrh that gives it something slightly different. To me, it smells a little bit of burnt, caramel. So if you imagine somebody making a rice pudding and then burning or singeing the top of that, it sort of smells a little bit like that, but slightly richer. The myrrh sort of gives it a nice rounded smell. The scent does stay on your skin for an awful long time and for the price that you pay, you would expect it to. It does leave your skin nice and soft. It's quite a quick moisturizer. So if you need a quick fix and your skin is super parched, if you use this for maybe two days, you notice a vast improvement in your skin. I can see why the price tag is so much. At the same time, I can see why a lot of people would be put off because giving credit to Lush, a lot of their body lotions are really good. So it's not like all of the other ones are terrible and this just stands out, which is why everyone rushes to buy this one. This is not something that's going to sell out. For me though, not worth the £29.50 price tag. Okay, also coming up on Monday is Aura Suavis. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. That's how I've always pronounced it, but you know me and my pronunciations. I get them wrong all the time. This is a shower gel that has not seen the light of day in many, many years. It has come out a variety of times, but it's not been available to the public. It did used to come out at something called the Lush Fest. So this came out as two colours. It came out as a sort of raspberry, reddy, pinky colour, and it came out as like a bit of a mustard yellow. So I don't quite know. I assume that they'll bring it out in the mustardy yellow because that seems to be the one that it comes out most frequently, but who knows, maybe they'll do both. This shower gel is a very weird combination of smells, but it is really beautifully unique and something I'm really excited to try. Like lemon cheesecake topping, but with a slight sourness to it that you wouldn't get in that sort of dessert. So it is a fruity smell. However, it's not zesty, it's just fruity and wholesome and underneath this you get both a thread of mint and this mint is not really in your face. It's a weird unique smell and then alongside the mint you get a slight herbal element 
which comes from the sage and the coriander. This isn't again overly strong but it is definitely a part of the mix and that's what really gives it that unique kick to the shower gel. If I remember it was sort of a little bit thinner than yummy mummy shower gel. It stays on your skin for a little while afterwards, it goes a long way, it lathers up well. It wasn't a shower gel that really grabbed me and sold itself to me, but it was definitely one that needs to be experienced. So on to Tuesday, and the first thing coming out on Tuesday is something called Christingle Body Conditioner. Now I think this is a fantastic idea for Lush to bring out at this time of the year because it came out firstly last Christmas for Christmas 2015, that's the first time it was ever released to the public and it was a product that I don't know how well it sold, I'm guessing it's not coming back this Christmas hence why it's out now, but it was a product I remember thinking it's good but it would have much more of an impact if it was brought out in the summer months. It just lathers up all over your body, you rinse yourself down, and you're sort of slightly sticky. And the idea is that the body conditioner is super nourishing for your skin. It's sort of like a alternative for a body lotion. It's quite a basic minty smell. It does just remind me of the white wriggly spearmint chewing gum. There's a little bit of grapefruit oil in here alongside the spearmint and the peppermint, and it sort of does give it a very slight spritzy element to it, but in all fairness, 99% of this is just mint, mint, mint. As I said, I was a bit confused when this came out last year. It's called Christingle, therefore there's the Christmas link. But for me, it was a summer product and I'm so glad they're bringing it back out now. I think it'd be so much more popular because when you put this body lotion on, it is so cooling and it tingles your skin and it cools it down. And some people hated it at Christmas because it's winter, it's cold. You want a bath to warm yourself up or a shower and you slather this slather, that smother and lather together. Then you get a really cooling sensation. If you're cold already and it's snowing outside, the last thing you want to do is lather yourself in something that's going to make you feel colder. It does replenish your skin, it does leave a scent on you and not a really strong horrible mint smell, just a nice gentle cooling peppermint and spearmint. Great summer product, I highly recommend that you get this. Okay guys, also coming up on Tuesday is something called Quin Cream of Nineveh soap. Okay, whatever you do, do not ask me to repeat that soap name. I think I've pronounced it right. I actually did some research on this one. It's a very odd sounding soap and to look at is absolutely nothing special. Perhaps the most boring soap that Lush do. It is literally a slab of white. First and foremost, you have lots of coconut oil, which does give it that sort of warming, sweet, coconutty smell. Alongside this, you have the benzene resinoid, which is what you get in the snow cake family. And that also adds what I can only really describe as a fruity smell but quite a weird fruity smell and to round it off it has some vanilla absolute which sort of takes away that full-on nutty scent from the coconut and gives it much more of a warming sweet layer. The site reminds me slightly of Curly Whirly because that's sort of coconutty but warming and vanilla-y as well. It's actually quite a good soap. I was quite impressed with the smell, it lasted on my skin, it wasn't overly strong, just a nice gentle vanilla-y, coconutty smell with a little bit of benzene resinoid in there to give it that fruity, vinegary, whatever you want to describe it scent. On to Wednesday and oh my goodness, Wednesday is the greatest day. A part of me likes to think that Wednesday was designed with me in mind, but that's really arrogant. It features a product that I've been looking forward to the Lush Kitchen releasing for so long and it features a product that I've been waiting for the kitchen to bring back because I missed out the last two times. So the first product coming up on Wednesday is the Magic Mushroom Bubble Bar. I have been saving this bubble bar because it is one of the greatest design bubble bars that Lush have ever done and the smell is divine. I love the design of this. It reminds me of the magic mushrooms or the mushrooms in Mario. So it sort of reminds me of my childhood. It is so pretty, it's so gorgeous and quirky and unique and the best thing about this is the fact that it has the yummy mummy scent. As you guys know, I love my peeping Santas, 
I love my Flutter by Bubble Bars. I obsess over my rollers. And this is just another one to add to that collection. This is, ah, oh, strawberry sweetness. A sort of soapy strawberryness actually. But this could be because this is quite an old bubble bar. But strawberry with that hint of geranium. All of that goodness together. I don't think I really need to describe the yummy mummy scent. But it is wonderful. This turns your bath a really lovely red colour as you would expect from the design on the top and it is silky soft this will sell out within a matter of hours guaranteed i love it it's one of my favorite bubble bars it's highly rated on my blog i am going to buy a handful that is the magic mushroom bubble bar now the other product coming up on wednesday is another product that has the same scent and it is called mrs whippy bath bomb Now there's a bit of a conflict with this product because some people argue vehemently that it doesn't share its scent. I think that the scent of Mrs Whippy is definitely different from all of the other yummy 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 and yummy mummy ranges but I know that this is probably because of the way it's been designed. This in all fairness is probably the least interesting product with that scent. It's just a white bath bomb. It froths and foams in the water and then you're not left with much colour at all. However there is something really lovely about it. There is Tonka Absolute in there. It has a really lovely powdery sweet smell. Again strawberries, geranium etc but this time as I said added Tonka so it is slightly different. Again this is really really good for this time of the year Mrs Whippy ice creams and as a vegan I can't eat those ice creams so this is the next best thing. In the bath not very impressive I wouldn't say it's highly moisturizing it's not terrible for your skin but it's not the most moisturizing bath bomb I've had. It's just not the most interesting in the bath water. Most people would probably agree that would rather have Rollerball back than Mrs Whippy because Roll is just much more interesting and colorful. But overall, I am going to buy myself a small handful of Mrs Whippy, a bigger handful of Magic Mushroom Bubble Bar, and that makes a gorgeous, fruity, laurel Wednesday for you. On to Thursday, and the first product coming up is a non-vegan product called Flying Fox Shower Gel. I really wish that this product could be vegan because although I don't love the scent family, I would really like to try this in shower gel form. So Flying Fox is not vegan because it is packed full of honey, which is a shame, but it's great for those who love the scent and love having products that will moisturize you because with the amount of honey there, it's going to perk up, replenish and nourish your skin to no end. This shower gel shares its scent with the Lust range. What is bad about this product is the fact that it features a high dosage of jasmine and the key scent in this whole family actually is jasmine and a very very heady jasmine smell. If you're not prepared for that or if you don't like jasmine please don't buy this product. You will hate it. It is very popular. Flying Fox used to be a regular shower gel so it's going to sell out pretty quickly. There is lots of honey in it. The honey does sort of, from what I remember from the sniffs I've had, the honey does sort of put a small layer of sweetness over the jasmine so you don't have that smack bang in your face smell. I can't really say much more about Flying Fox. I've never tried it before. I've only given it a couple of sniffs a few years ago but I know it's going to be popular. I know it will sell out quite quickly. Mm, by the end of the day maybe. Some of it might sneak into the next day but we can't guarantee. And the product I am the most excited about this week, Irresistible Bliss Solid Shampoo Bar. Now I have to say, I, I want to say thank you to the Lush Kitchen for finally reformulating and creating the shampoo bar that I have been dreaming of since the day you opened your store. Irresistible Bliss, I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is about this solid shampoo bar. It is, in my mind, the greatest solid shampoo bar, the greatest shampoo, the greatest hair care product. It really is my number one hair care product. To look at, it's very similar to Lullaby in that it's just a red disc as you would expect. The smell is, I suppose to its favour, just a very light floral smell. The floral smell is not anything unique, it's not anything great. It's just your straightforward floral smell. And if you're somebody who wants to have the smell on your skin afterwards, this product isn't for you because it really doesn't leave an impression smell-wise on your skin. However, how 
ever. It is incredible. It is absolutely incredible on your hair. I honestly cannot rate it enough. I'm just gushing over this product. I'm so happy. I just found my hair was easily in the best condition of its life. It felt light, it felt airy, it felt moisturized, my split ends disappeared, the color or the natural highlights in my hair came forward, my hair was bouncy and it was manageable, the frizz disappeared, it gave it some nice shape so it just looked lovely. I didn't have to straighten it. If I didn't brush it and just ran my fingers through it, I found that it still looked really good and presentable. I believe I could be speaking rubbish, but I believe that Lush A Lot also loves this shampoo bar. And so, you know, I think that speaks for itself if April loves it as much as me. I really cannot rate this product high enough. I think I might buy four or five. Honestly, I love this product so much so buy it but only buy it once you know that I've got mine because if I miss out on this there is going to be I don't I don't know I'm not going to make any threats but people will be in trouble and on to Friday and the first product the stinkiest product of the week goes to the snake oil hair treatment When I first tried this product, oh my goodness, I thought it was the most disgusting smell I'd ever tried and it went in the bin pretty quickly. When I bought it the second time, it still took me a good while to get used to this smell. This product stinks. So this product has peppermint, lavender and tea tree and you can really get that peppermint and tea tree coming through. It is to the point where it's like a smoky peppermint smell. The idea behind this product is it's supposed to cure or reduce and help people with dried scalps, people with dandruff. So just like a massage bar, you take it in your hands, you massage it gently in the palm of your hands and you'll be left with an oily residue on your fingers. The idea then is that you go through painstakingly through your hair and you gently massage your hands or your fingers into the, either the areas of the scalp that you're most prone to. I know a lot of people do have dry patches here or if you just have a lot of dandruff in general you can use your whole entire head so you massage it into the scalp the peppermint tingles it helps those follicles it stimulates that growth but at the same time it really moisturizes and nourishes the scalp so the dandruff disappears and any sort of annoying itchiness is supposed to stop despite me trying and reviewing this product I didn't need to I don't have a dry scalp I don't suffer from dandruff my second issue with the product is the fact that it left my hair slightly oily and slightly flat. Thirdly, it took me an awful long time to put that product across my whole head. Although this product would last an awful long time, I tried it a good five to six times and the bar had not changed shape even slightly. So this product is great value for money if it works for you, but I just found that it just takes too long, it's fiddly, it leaves residue in your hair which then causes problems. I've heard people rave about it, I've seen videos on YouTube of people who love it and say that it really has helped them with their dry scalp and I think if you have a dry scalp this is a product you should try, this is unlike anything else that Lush do, just be aware of the smell. I'm sure it will work for people, it must work for people because it's come out before. For me it's just fiddly, smelly, takes too long to do, doesn't have any impression or any effect on my skin. For that reason, a big thumbs down. And the final product coming out on Friday is Blue Skies Liquid Bubble Bath. I do really wish that Lush would bring out more liquid bubble baths because for me, they are much better value for money than the bubble bars. This is Blue Skies. I just forget that I have it in all fairness and use bath bombs and bubble bars, etc. most of the time. The idea behind this is this is just a liquefied version of the bubble bar. You just pour out as much or as little as you want underneath the tap and it stimulates those bubbles. On the positive side, it will last you longer and is better value for money than the bubble bars. It's easily the equivalent of probably 10 bubble bars. On the negative side, I wouldn't say that this is as more moisturizing as the bubble bars. While I haven't actually tried this, I'm pretty sure that you could probably use this as a shower gel. If they're going to allow you to bathe in this, then I don't see any 
reason why you couldn't use this to lather up on your skin and then rinse yourself off. It's the same difference. Another positive about this is the fact that the colour of it is so rich. This one will give you more of a vivid colour and the same amount of bubbles really. I don't, I can't remember this producing less or more really. And for those who've not tried anything Blue Skies, this is frankincense, myrrh and patchouli. I love it to pieces. And now that I've just reminded myself that I could use this as a shower gel, that's exactly what I'm going to go and do now. I'm going to finish up this video and go and take a shower and enjoy some blue skies. So there we go guys, another video. Top three products of the week. Definitely Irresistible Bliss Solid Shampoo Bar, number one. Number two, Magic Mushroom Bubble Bar. I love that design, I love that scent. I'm going to be buying lots of those. And third product, I'm going to say Aura Suavis Shower Gel. So those are my three favorite products. Let me know below in the comments what you're going to buy. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's been helpful. I hope when you see this that it's not Monday or Tuesday night because my computer's failed again. I hope that this will be up Sunday evening. Just as a little bit of a treat for you, my best friend came into my room earlier and found the setup to my camera and decided to film some footage on her impression of what I do on a weekly basis for these videos. So uh, enjoy the outtakes. This is my favourite soap. It's called Rose Argan and yeah, it tastes like soap, so I'd really recommend this one if you're after that soapy taste. It's not too strong, but it's has got that aftertaste of soap. So, Rose Garden. Rose Garden? Rose Garden! Yeah, highly recommend this one. Um, six out of six, because that's the scale we work on. Um... My name is Cuban Pete, I'm the king of the lumber beat. When I shake my malacas, they go chee chee boom chee chee boom chee chee boom Hi, I'm Chelsea and I will be guest blogging on All Things Lush UK this week. And the product that I'm recommending today is my personal favourite. Um, so it's quite a rare product, I know a lot of people aren't going to be able to get a hold of it. Uh, but it is called the Giles Tastic, and basically you can see how big it is. That it's not really that affordable, and because of its rareness, it's also going to be a bit hard to get. But I recommend it because it's well, you can get quite a lot of uses out of it because you just need to dunk it in a few times, and then yeah, it's good to go. So I'd say probably. Well, it's lasted me nine years so far, and yeah, it's got authentic cat taste, but with like a scent of muskiness, you know, that sleep muskiness. Yeah, it's really a required smell, but once you get used to it, it's really just, it's the best product there is out there. Gels-tastic. Oh, look how much he loves his mama. I don't want to love kisses. Oh, so much. I love them so much. It makes me all nervous.